and my brothers. I was born on Easter Sunday, so if that's not a sign, I'm not sure what is. <laughs> and as if, as if that's not enough, there was a rainbow on the day I was born and also on the day I was baptized. So as you can see, I was doomed from the start. <laughs> and I say doomed, but I really do mean humbled and blessed to have received so great and beautiful a gift. I remember my parents praying with me before bed as a kid. I remember my favorite bedtime story being the children's Bible. The only thing was I apparently insisted on the whole thing being read in one sitting. <laughs> but then again, who wouldn't? Uh, and uh, so I'm very thankful to my parents for instilling the importance of the faith to me at a very young age. And my formation in the faith continued as I attended my parish's grade school, St. Jude's in Joliet. And it was there that I really encountered a living faith uh, through religion class, daily prayer, weekly mass, the sacraments, but also through the people, the joyful and generous parishioners at the parish, my teachers, uh, but I'd say most especially my pastor, Father Michael Lane. He came to St. Jude's when I was in first or second grade. He's been there since, and he's just a man of great joy. And it's, it's as if the love of Christ radiates from him, overflows from him. You rarely leave a conversation with Father Michael not laughing in some way. Uh, just the joy is, is right there. Um, and in my seventh grade year at St. Jude's, uh, there were three Nashville Dominicans that came to the school. One is principal, two is teachers. And I saw a very similar thing in them, joy, peace, fulfillment, passion for doing the Lord's work. So I, saw from, I knew from their example and from Father Michael's example that if the Lord were to call me one day to the priesthood or religious life, I would find a life of peace, joy, and fulfillment. After grade school, I attended Joliet West High School, and by the grace of God, I made the choice that I wanted to continue to live in that gift that I had been given up to that point. Uh, by the grace of God, able to maintain a consistent prayer life somewhat, uh, continue to learn about the faith as much as I could. I remember uh, listening to different apologetics and just really falling in love with the faith. Specifically, I remember listening to EWTN's open line where callers will call in and ask questions about the faith and then they'll discuss it. And as I continued to listen to that, there was something within my heart that just started to burn with love. And I desired more and more to just immerse myself in that and to see my life through the eyes of faith. And so that continued pretty much all the way through high school. And also in high school, I was able to have some different service opportunities through different clubs and school, through Boy Scouts. And as I began to serve people, uh, I found that it was very life-giving for me, very subtle, but I'd describe it as life-giving. And while I wasn't explicitly leading souls to Christ, there was something about it that kept bringing me back, kept making me want to go back and help people. And... Uh, also was able to have some different leadership opportunities in high school. So as I, looking back on it, as I grew as a leader, grew in my comfort as a leader, as I grew in my desire to serve, as I grew in my desire to live a life of faith and grow in prayer, it seemed as if towards the end of junior and senior year, all those different desires converged to the priesthood. And the, during the fall of my senior year, I attended a Vianney visit here, and through the witness of the seminarians and the priests, um, I knew that this was the next step that God was calling me to, to discern the priesthood. And after two and a half years here, it's been an incredible journey. The Lord has done incredible work. I'm very thankful for that, and I'm, very, I'm equally thankful for all the blessings that lie in store. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.